How's it going, guys? Difficult question for hematology, even neuro for step one internal medicine for 2CK and surgery. Uh, nearly identical question shows up one of the offline step one assessments, although I consider this 2CK level. Tell you exactly what you need to know and not waste our time, because this can be overwhelming very fucking fast. Before we get started, please subscribe to my channel. Really appreciate it. Give it a like. Really appreciate it. Find me on Instagram at melman underscore medical, M-E-H-L-M-A-N underscore medical. Links down below. Find me on Telegram. The links to the Telegram group or channel are down below. Now start the clip. 39-year-old woman brought to the ED one-day history of fever, confusion, lethargy. She's febrile at 38 Fahrenheit. Physical exam shows scattered ecchymosis, particular neurologic exam shows mild to moderate generalized weakness. She's oriented to person but not place or time. Laboratory studies show hemoglobin decreased 9.5 grams per deciliter should be 12 to 17.5 in menstruating women, 13 to 17.5 in non-menstruating women and men. Leukocytes, normal 7,500 per microliter should be 4 to 11,000. Platelets decreased 20,000 per microliter should be 150 to 450,000. Prothrombin time normal, 12 seconds should be 10 to 15 seconds. Partial thermoplastin time, 34 seconds, which is normal, should be 25 to 40 seconds. Blood urine nitrogen, elevated 26 milligrams per deciliter should be under 20. A Coombs test is negative, which means we have no antibodies against RBCs. This detail can seem very confusion, confusing for students. All it means is we have no antibodies here against red blood cells uh, in terms of trying to explain why we have low hemoglobin. An intravenous exchange transfusion is started and within a week her condition rebounds. Question wants to know what's most likely to be seen in this patient. It's a very uh, verbose question here. All right. As I said, it's very similar to uh, one of the offline step one questions, and I'm just going to whip us through it. So should I say decreased activity of antiprotonase 3? Wrong fucking answer. However, you could be aware that the presence of antiprotonase 3 antibodies can sometimes be seen in Wegener granulomatosis, aka granulomatosis polyangiitis. Actually, the latter is the new name for it. Wegener is former. And this is the same as C. Inca for all intents and purposes. Wegener is going to be hematuria plus hemoptysis in a patient who has head-itis, colloquially as I refer to it, which just means any problem with the head, nasal septal perforation, otitis, sinusitis, mastoiditis, and you need to know pathologically for biopsy of the kidney, you're going to see necrotizing glomerulonephritis. It's an important detail. Wegener is a cause of rapidly progressive glomerulonephritis where you get fibrin crescents. Wrong fucking answer. Choice B, decreased activity, HLA-B27 reductase, very recondite sounding answer choice, wrong fucking answer. This is going to be congenital methemoglobinemia, sounds recondite. This is on pediatrics for 2CK. This is assessed, okay? Now, all you need to know, they're going to give you a two-year-old who has brown blood. They're going to say that, okay? That's the colloquialism for methemoglobinemia, and you're going to be reading the vignette, and you're like, yes, I know this diagnosis, just methemoglobinemia, cool. And then you get to the answer choices, and they're asking you for enzyme-related stuff. And deficiency of HLA-B27 reductase is one of them. This is the answer for, con for congenital methemoglobinemia. And if you were to wiki this, you'll see that they actually talk about this. Wrong fucking answer. Choice C, decreased activity of metalloproteinase is our correct answer, which refers to Adam TS13, which is metalloproteinase that breaks down uh, von Willebrand factor multimers. Okay, so this is TTP, thrombotic thrombocytopenic purpura. Very confusing diagnosis, okay, when we try to explain these things. Now, I said I would uh, simplify it. This is what you need to know. There are there's an umbrella term for some conditions referred to as microangiopathic hemolytic anemia. And that classically, that umbrella term refers to HUS, so hemolytic remix syndrome, and TTP, thrombotic thrombocytopenic purpura. Very confusing, okay? And this is what's going to happen. In both of these conditions, you're going to see three things. You're going to see something wrong with the kidney. It can be red urine, can be elevation creatinine, or renin or even blood urine nitrogen as we have here. So that's one. So renal problem. Number two, thrombocytopenia. And number three, you're going to see low hemoglobin. Okay. So you're going to see hemolysis and you're actually going to sh get schistocytes on a smear. They want you to know that. They can give you the same fucking question here and the answer is schistocytes. They give you all the red blood cells. Answer is schistocytes. Okay. So the combination of thrombocytopenia and uh, schistocytes is known as MAHA, microangiopathic hemolytic anemia. So you're going to see those three things. Okay, in both HUS and TTP. However, HUS is merely that triad alone. And HUS is going to be caused by GI infection, E. HEC, E. coli, 0157H7, or Shigella. It's a toxin, usually pediatric. TTP, you take that triad, as I just described, and you just add fever and neurologic signs on top of it. 
Sort of sounds like she had maybe a stroke here. We're not really sure what's going on. She's She's got a fever. HUS, you don't get a fever. You're not getting neurologic signs. So in both conditions, in one way or another, the immune system, T cell related, in toxin with the HUS, and TTP, usually idiopathic, okay? Autoimmune propensity, there can be a trigger, but generally idiopathic trigger. You're going to get increased activity of Adam TS13, nebulous sounding matrix metalloproteinase that normally uh, prevents the breakdown of von Wilburn factor multimers, very buzzy type of uh, phrasing there. You get, you get decreased activity of Adam TS13 in both of these conditions. So because you cannot get turnover of platelet complexes with uh, bound with von Wilburn factor in the renal endothelium, we get consumption of platelets and we will get shearing of red blood cells that fly past these platelet clumps, which is why we get the schistocytes. As I said, can get very fucking confusing very fast, but I just want you to take home that Adam TS13 is associated with both TTP and HUS. You have decreased activity of it. You need to know it's a matrix metalloproteinase. You need to know that you get failure of cleavage of on Willebrand factor multimers. HUS is only the triad of renal issues thrombocytopenia, schistocytosis, hemolytic anemia, whereas TTP, we're going to add fever and neurologic signs on top of it. Now, real quick, decreased activity of myeloperoxidase, wrong fucking answer. You can know that the presence of anti-myeloperoxidase antibodies are seen in Churg-Strauss and microscopic polyangiitis. Churg-Strauss, and it's the same thing as p -Anca for all intents and purposes for USMLE. Uh, and you can know that Churg Strauss is going to be eosinophilia and asthma like presentation. Microscopic polyangiitis is just going to be red urine. There's a lot we can talk about. I'm just going to finish up the clip here. Choice E, increased activity of plasma, wrong fucking answer. This would be seen in disseminated intravascular coagulation, where we get consumption of clotting factors and increased conversion of fibrinogen to fibrin. Fibrinogen is decreased. Increased fibrin means that we have clot formation. So, in terms of homeostasis, you're going to, in turn, get increased plasma activity as well to break down those fibrin clots, increased fibrin degradation products. That's D-dimer. Wrong fucking answer. You know the deal. I'm going to make more content. If you like my stuff, subscribe to my channel. And I appreciate your time. That's it.